All right. We are so excited that you are here with us today to learn about our brand new course, Game Design in Unity. We are um, releasing this course later this summer. So you're going to get the first peek at what is in this course. And then you're going to actually be able to experience this course from the student side, which is going to be really, really awesome. So if you want to take a, a minute to um, introduce yourself in the chat, we are just going to wait one more minute, give everyone a, a chance to get into our um, session today. So you can introduce yourself, just say who you are, where you are. If you're new to Code HS, we know that you're new to this course, so that's fine. But maybe you've, teach, you've taught other um, Code HS courses with us, so you could let us know. Any of that information is, is really helpful to know who's in the room with us. Thanks, Mark. Kicking us off. Awesome. APCSP, cool. Awesome, we got people from all over. And as you're doing that, we do still have some more people coming in, but you can also um, navigate over to this link. I know it might get lost in the chat. We can drop it in and then you can scroll to find it um, for our attendance today. So this is just a, a quick way for us to, to know, to mark that you're here. Um, so just so we can get a head count for today's session. All right, awesome. Brand new to this content, yeah. Awesome, teaching game design and video game programming, great. So we have lots of people here. We are going to um, get started now. Um, as some people are still coming in, you can continue to introduce yourself. Awesome, South Korea, thanks for joining us. <laughs> um, we are going to be bringing you an awesome session today on our brand new course, Game Design in Unity. And um, I'm just gonna introduce the four of us from Code HS that are here with you today. So my name is Julia Trigo, and during the year, I am a teacher in a high school in Virginia. Um, I used to work for Code HS on the curriculum development team. And I um, now, this summer, I'm back at Code HS because I just can't leave. <laughs> um, and I'm working as a PD specialist, bringing you some awesome content, um, showing you why Code HS is such a helpful thing to use in the classroom. So I'm really excited to be here with you all today. We also have Ryan Hart with us. He is the curriculum developer who's working on this course, Game Design and Unity. And he's gonna lead us through some sample lessons in the course. So you're gonna be able to see the, um, the actual lessons that your students will go through. You'll be able to see what they're gonna do, how they're gonna interact with the content. And he's gonna give you some tips um, for how you can use this most successfully with your students. We also have Ursula and Matt from the um, customer experience team and the curriculum development team to answer all of the questions that you have. So we wanna make sure you get all of the answers that you came for today. So that brings us to how can you ask your questions during our session today? Well, you can always put them into the chat, but like you saw the chat, we have a lot of people here the chat can easily get inundated. So let's skip to the next slide to show our question parking lot that we're gonna use. So we are going to put this link into the chat. This is a really great document for you to use to ask your questions so that we make sure we can answer all of them. We don't want any of them to get lost in the mix. So it's awesome to have this document open on the side as you're watching the presentation today. And as soon as a question pops into your head, even if you have one right now getting started, you can go over to that document and ask it there. And we will throughout the um, session be answering those questions in live, live time. So um, make sure that you get those questions on there. That's the easiest, best way for us to communicate answers to you and give you um, links and any information that we think will be helpful. All right. Now let's get into Code HS. So if you need an account, you can head over to codehs.com slash sign up and it will ask you a few 
um, bits of information about the school that you're at and things like that so that we know that you are um, a verified, we can get you verified as a teacher on our site. If you already have an account, you can um, just log in right now. You're, you're gonna be able to access a demo course that we're gonna use. So here is our link to our demo section. And this is a really awesome thing because this course is not released yet. So you, when you get into this demo course, you're gonna be able to access the, some parts of the material that are released so far um, so that you can check that out before the course is released later in the month. So um, our link to the um, demo section is gonna be thrown into the chat, awesome. And our code is right there. So as you join the demo section, just like your students join courses sections on CodeHS, um, it's gonna ask you for a code and it's the last five digits of that URL. So you're gonna enter that 717F8 and you should be enrolled then as a student in our demo section for our workshop today. If you're having any issues getting into our demo section, you can write them in the chat or write them on the parking lot and we will help you out. But this is an awesome way for you to have access to some of the content in this course before it is released later this month. All right, so let's take a look at what we're going to be doing today. So our agenda, we did a quick check-in and set up our accounts. If you did not enroll in the demo section yet, or you want to just wait to create an account, you wanna just sit back and watch, that is totally fine. You can always access that later. And a lot of these links that we're sharing are at the top of that parking lot question document as well. So if you lose those links in the chat as we're going through this section, I know there's a lot of links, there's a lot to do as we're getting started today. Um, you can always access those links right at the top of that document. So after we are all ready to go, Ryan is gonna kick us off with an overview of what is this course? This is a brand new course. So we wanna know what's in it, how is it gonna be um, given to our students? How are we gonna use Unity um, to teach this game design course on CodeHS? Then he's gonna go through three sample lessons. So he's gonna show you three different types of lessons that are in this course. And then he's gonna um, demo through those and talk about some of the ways that you can um, bring this content to your students most effectively. So he's gonna talk about some of those strategies. And you're also gonna have some a, a few chances to chat with other teachers in our session today, because we know that we both have teachers who have taught Unity on their own before, some teachers who might be brand new, and it's awesome to be able to chat with each other and get some, throw some ideas around and get some information from fellow teachers all around the country and the world. So um, we are gonna have a break time at some point. It might not be um, at that point. We might push it up a little earlier. Um, we wanna make sure that we are um, giving you a break while also giving you all the content and the time that you need to um, be chatting with, with others about this and, and looking at it for yourself as, um, as someone who may be using this in, in the next school year. We're gonna then look at some teacher tools and resources on the site that will help you be able to bring this content to your students. And we will end with a, a time for ask, asking questions, but a reminder, you don't have to wait until the end. As you get questions, throw them in the parking lot document and you will be able to get those answers as we're going through our workshop today. All right, and the goal for today, let's just frame our session. We wanna make sure that we're, we are understanding, we are gonna be able to look at this brand new course and we're gonna see from the teacher side, some ways that you can bring this content to your students. So Unity is a, a very high level um, program that we're gonna be using to develop games. So you may still need to go through the content on your own if, if Unity is something that you have never used before but we will give you all those tools and resources so that you are prepared to um, make that something that you're gonna be able to use in your classroom with your students. All right, so we are going to hop in. Ryan, take it. Awesome, thanks, Julia. Uh, super excited to be here with you guys and show you some of this course. Uh, there's been a lot in the works for a while. Um, so again, as, as Julia mentioned, please uh, ask questions in that parking lot. Uh, there's a lot here, especially because it's a little different than our 
other Code HS courses. We're using Unity as a, a third party software. Um, so yeah, definitely want to hear what you guys uh, are thinking and, and please share those thoughts. Um, so before we take a look at the overview, uh, I want to start with a poll uh, just to see what some of the experience you guys have. Um, so if you have your cell phone, you can just scan the QR code here. Um, otherwise, you can go to slido.com and then type in the uh, poll code, uh, code HS, and that will bring you to our questions here. And uh, all right. So uh, the first question is, have you used Unity before? Curious to see who have been on the platform, who has not. Again, you can use the QR code to get here or go to slido.com and use the uh, code, code HS. All right, so early results here. We're seeing 16 come in. Looks like around two thirds have not used Unity before. That's awesome. And about a third has, cool. I'll just give it a minute. Uh, there's one other question. So uh, definitely uh, take the time to scan that code in or go to slido.com so we can see where you guys are all at. It's looking like as numbers trickle in, maybe around two thirds to three quarters have not used Unity. I'll give you maybe another five seconds here. Okay, so we're settling around uh, around three quarters have not used Unity. Uh, yeah, two thirds to three quarters, great. Okay, so next question here. So have you taught a game design course with Unity? So if you've used Unity before, have you actually taught a course with Unity? Um, you can click uh, yes or no. And if you haven't used Unity, um, but you have taught a game design course uh, with another platform, um, select that option as well. So we'll kind of see where people are just in terms of teaching game design and teaching it with Unity. Okay, so we have, uh, let's see about two thirds coming in. So it looks like half of you have uh, not taught a course, a game design course at all. Um, and then about a third of the respondents has, uh, have taught game design with another platform. Um, and around 17% of you have done a game design course with Unity. That's awesome. Um, so those who have taught with Unity or have Unity, um, you're definitely, uh, appreciated in joining this, uh, you know, as we do breakout groups, we'd love to hear your insights and what has worked with you in, in teaching a course with Unity um, and be sure to share that with the other teachers as well. Cause I think, you know, you guys have the uh, experience in the classroom and know what worked with students the best. Uh, so anything that you guys can help share in those breakout sessions uh, is awesome. Okay, cool. So about half, yeah, we're about half uh, no. And then the other half has taught some form of a game design uh, and if there are those uh, on another platform. Cool, thank you guys. All right, so let's jump into the course here and we'll start with an overview um, and then we'll get into the sample lessons. So uh, our course is designed to be a one-year course uh, aimed for high school students. Um, there's really kind of two main focuses in the course. Uh, one focus is looking at the industry as a whole um, looking at uh, some of the main ideas in game design, what it means to work in game design and uh, things like the ethics and security around uh, building games. So it's kind of industry focused. And then the other portion is really the technical side. So actually implementing some of these design skills uh, in Unity and, and thinking about, you know, how do you actually create a game? Um, so both of those are kind of interwoven throughout the course um, in both the first and second semester. Um, so the course is intended for high school students, as I mentioned. Um, this is a, a totally introductory level course. So this is assuming no background in programming or game design, um, but having some general technical skills or computer literacy definitely helps uh, being able to navigate 
uh, you know, the code chess site, but then also learn um, the ins and outs of Unity as we go through it. Um, this is not a programming heavy course. Um, there's going to be a little scripting, uh, but really the focus is on game design as a whole. So it provides that um, kind of survey of the industry as, uh, along with building the technical skills. Um, so don't worry if students haven't had programming. That's not a focus of this course. Um, because this uses a standalone uh, software, Unity, uh, there definitely are some slightly different tech requirements than our normal CodeHS courses. So uh, Unity is not, the software is not integrated into the CodeHS site. So it will be operating on its own. Um, so be sure to check out these uh, system requirements. Um, generally, you will need um, a, a stronger computer, something with a little more processing than a Chromebook um, to be able to run Unity. Uh, and right now, I don't believe there's a, a browser-based Unity. So you'll really need a laptop or desktop uh, to be able to run Unity. Um, it is a free download, uh, so you don't have to pay for the software. But it just because it's video rendering, it will require just a little more processing power. Um, so be sure to check that out uh, as you are thinking through this course. Um, so Unity versions, this came up uh, when we did our launch webinar uh, a month ago. Uh, Unity is very good at keeping uh, the software up to date. Every couple of weeks, they're releasing updates. Um, so that can cause a lot of confusion. So I want to just clarify um, what's going on. So Unity has what they call the Unity Hub. And that's a great um, kind of interface that manages Unity and project versions. Projects are um, what the, the files that students will be working on in Unity. That's called a project. Um, so the hub manages both what versions of Unity are installed and what versions the projects um, are being built with. So Unity supports many long-term stable versions. Uh, so they're you know, constantly releasing versions. And a, a version becomes stable after a year of kind of development and updates. So right now, the 2020 version is the most recent stable version, whereas the 2021 hasn't re reached that stable version yet. So for that reason, um, the, uh, we're, we're going with the, the 2020 stable version for our project files. We, we share a few project files with uh, students for our uh, exercises. So we've chosen, uh, as of a few days ago, the most recent update for that long-term stable. Um, and so that's the 2020.3.12 uh, version. And so that that version is going is is going to be updated every couple of weeks, but it's really just minor, I think, usability things. The main core of that version isn't going to be touched now. It's long-term kind of stable for projects. Um, so projects can be opened with newer versions of Unity. Uh, but not the reverse. So you can't have an older version of Unity now opening our you know, 2020 uh, projects. So we recommend uh, as you're installing Unity or if you need to update Unity on your computers, going with this 2020 stable version. Um, I think they just released 3.13 yesterday. Um, but with this uh, link here, um, you can see all the lists of, of their versions. And so you can actually select 12. Um, and so that might just be the easiest way to guarantee that everything's going to work fine. But I believe every version of 2020 uh, should be fine because there's not really any big changes within the version that they're. So it can definitely be a little confusing. Uh, I just spent some time you know, making sure I understood kind of all the versions because it is really every couple of weeks they're, they're pushing updates. Um, and this version is supported for the next three years um, through the Unity uh, company. So we have a lesson on this um, in terms of installing Unity that your students can follow or you can follow. Um, we will be updating it with this new version um, shortly. Uh, I think what's released in the beta version doesn't have this yet, um, but just so it's out there. Um, and if you have questions, please put it in the parking lot. Okay, so let's look at the course structure. Um, so the course is, we still use the main CodeHS platform for the structure of the course and organizing it just even though it's, it's in a lot of it's in Unity. So top level, the course is broken into modules, which are kind of the main topics uh, within the course. 
And within each module, there are lessons. So this first module, there's three lessons. And then within each lesson, we have the activities. So this course is, again, is a little different being a design course. Uh, in general, lessons are aimed for a class period or two. Um, but some lessons can be much longer, um, especially our tutorial lessons in Unity, where you could spend you know, a, a week uh, with students really getting into the, the creation process in Unity. Um, but that's in general how the course is structured. Um, so specifics about the modules in there. Again, it's a mix of industry and technical uh, skills. So the course starts out with uh, industry related items, uh, just introducing students to Unity. Sorry if you can hear that lawnmower that is literally right outside my window. Um, so sorry, these first couple modules introduce them to the industry, what it means to be a game designer and kind of exploring the landscape there. And it's not until the third module students will actually start diving into Unity. Um, so you have some time to get the installs ready and, and troubleshoot it if need be. Um, and so they'll start learning the basics of uni using a lot of pre-made assets. Uh, and they end the first semester designing their own game with some of these pre-made assets. Uh, and there's a lot that they can do without knowing how to code and build everything themselves. Uh, there's a whole community of, of sharing assets. Um, second semester is similar. We're gonna get into um, some more about the industry, looking at ethics, uh, security, and then spend some time diving deeper into uh, um, some of the technical things that maybe we uh, gave to them in the, the first semester. Now they get to create their own uh, objects and um, effects and uh, yeah, things like that. Um, and then interwoven, they'll be starting to design their final project, uh, their game throughout that second semester. Um, so we'll look into some storyboarding and, and developing of that project. So that's kind of the, the overview there uh, of the, the main concepts. All right, so the, re the rest of the time with me, I'm gonna uh, walk through some sample lessons uh, with you guys so you can see really what a student might experience and we can talk through how you may implement it in your classroom as teachers. Um, again, if you haven't gone in here yet, um, please enroll in this uh, workshop section. Everything is locked right now. So I've used the CodeHS tool called Access Controls just to lock down the content until we get there. Um, but uh, we'll put this back into the, the chat. Uh, this is the demo section that has a few lessons that we're gonna look at today. So uh, this course, is a little different using Unity. Um, and so this webinar is a little different. Normally we have you guys actually go through activities as students uh, on these workshops. Uh, because it requires Unity, we're not gonna assume everyone has access to Unity right now, uh, nor do we wanna take the time together to uh, work through those installations, which can take some time. Um, so we're gonna talk through three different lessons. I'm gonna demo uh, what you would be doing with your students and what students would be doing. Um, and with the focus of kind of exposure to what's in there and how you may uh, take the code HS lesson and actually present it in your classroom. Uh, so the first lesson we'll talk about is uh, uh, using prefab objects uh, and looking at a card tutorial. Then we'll uh, skip a few lessons and look at building a scene with prefabs. And then we'll jump to the last module of the first semester and uh, looking at a lesson uh, of what makes a good game. I chose these three lessons because they're all slightly different uh, and we'll see as we get into them. So the goal here is really to demonstrate how the lessons are structured uh, and how they integrate with the Code HS platform um, because you're kind of using both for this course. Uh, and we're gonna look at a variety of ways uh, how to teach and present these lessons in different environments. I think most people are returning to the classroom, uh, but some may still be virtual as well or hybrid. All right. So uh, let's hop into this first lesson. So this is occurring in the middle of our first like Unity module, the Unity Fundamentals. Um, so students have already learned about game objects, materials, textures, transformations. So there is some knowledge that they've already seen up to this point. Um, so I'm gonna, again, put on the teacher hat and kind of show how I might implement this. And then we'll look at a variety of ways how you could uh, implement it in your classroom. Um, so here's the structure of the lesson. Um, 
the it starts with uh, it's a presentation of uh, material, a new idea, introducing prefabs, uh, and then the rest of the lesson is really working through a few tutorials in Unity uh, to demonstrate the use of these assets and prefabs. Uh, and then ending with a chance for students to make their own out of it. And they'll actually be able to make a, a car driving game, again, with very little um, knowledge in terms of scripting because we can use assets that are already developed. And, and I can show this. So to start class, I might start with a uh, discussion. Uh, and again, this is assuming uh, that they've already learned about game objects, materials, textures up to this point. So this is just kind of a chance to recall some of that information. So um, I know some of you have used Unity before. So I'd be curious uh, to hear from you. Uh, in your own words, uh, what is a game object in Unity? And we'll just take a minute and see if uh, uh, what you guys say. Those who have used Unity, again, if you don't know a game object right now, that's OK. But we'd love to see in the chat for those who have used Unity. In your own words, what is a game object? All right, I'm not seeing anything yet. It might, oh, there we go. So it's an object that can have properties and scripting attached to it. Excellent. Something that you can apply code to, fundamental entity that represents character, props, good. So a game object, uh, for those who haven't used Unity, um, can be a variety of things, but it's it's really an object. It can be you know anything from a simple cube, um, or it can be a tree you know that has uh, a little more complexity to it, um, and then you can attach components uh, to that game object. Nice, awesome. So follow up. Uh, here's a uh, statement, and in the um, the reactions panel in Zoom, uh, you can click yes or no. So click yes or no if you agree with this statement. Again, if you've used Unity, you might have a sense of this. If you haven't, no worries. So click yes or no. Is a material a game object? A material is a game object. Click yes if you agree, no if you disagree. And I can kind of watch your answers here. Okay, we're seeing some trickle in. We see some other reactions too. That's fun. Uh, thank you guys for exploring those. But it looks like it's split. Some people are saying yes, some people are saying no. Um, so this is a little bit more of a technical question. A material uh, itself is not a game object. It's a component that we would attach to a game object. Um, it is an entity though, an element in uh, Unity that we can configure though. All right, so uh, let's jump into the lesson now. So for this uh, sample lesson, uh, I'm gonna show the video and we're gonna watch the video together so you get a sense of, of what one of our videos looks like. Um, and I'm gonna pause it midway and then um, we'll, we'll jump into the exercises. So let's get this going here. Okay, so I'm gonna play this and hopefully the sound will come through, all right? Hi. In this lesson, you're going to take a look at using prefab items to create games in Unity. So by using pre-created items in Unity, you'll see how it can be easy to get up and running and still allow for customization to make your own game. In this lesson, we're going to create a car game on a mountainous test track. As you saw in previous lessons, game objects are the main building blocks for our programs. Game objects range from basic geometric shapes to complex three-dimensional models. Oftentimes, you need to bring together different objects and assets to use them. For example, if you want to make a car in your game, you need a car body, car tires, and a controller script. Each of these items needs to be assembled in just the right way to make an object work in Unity. So introducing prefabs. A prefab is a group of game objects and assets that have been put together to make a commonly used object that's ready to go. Think of a prefab as a pre-assembled game object that has everything you need to get started. As a developer, you may want to develop different interchangeable pieces, but you can put specific pieces together to create these prefab templates. For example, 
You may want to create a sports car with a specific set of tires and a specific user interface. You can bundle these together in a prefab and anytime you want to make a sports car, everything is set and ready to go. You just need to drag it and put it into your scene. So prefabs come in many sizes and shapes. Oftentimes, these are developed by others and shared in the Unity Asset Store, but you can make your own. In this lesson, you will see different types of prefabs, including an entire scene and different player objects. Some of the Unity lessons in CodeHS, including this one, use the Unity Tutorial feature. To get started with the projects in the tutorial, you will download the project and open it in Unity. After each tutorial, you will then share the project with your teacher using the Collaborate feature or other methods that your teacher may ask, um, as well as answer a few questions in CodeHS. So let's get started and take a look at how you download and open your projects in Unity. All right. So um, in terms of this sample, uh, I might start stop the video at that point um, and, and ask just say a recall question to students and asking, OK, so what is a prefab? How does it relate to game objects and, and how can it be um, <clears throat> useful in our developing? Again, they've used game objects before. So just a chance to kind of have some discussion after that video that we watched together as a class. Um, I pause the video midway uh, because I want to now demo the downloading of the tutorials uh, in person. This will be the first time that they're going to be doing uh, tutorials and having a project from us. Um, while the video does do a great job in showing it, I'm choosing to do it in person and uh, be able to answer questions and have students do it as I go through it myself. Um, so uh, the first step here, and so I'm going to, I already have these tabs preloaded, so I'm going to open up this downloading the tutorials uh, activity. Um, and let me, I forgot, I'm going to unlock this lesson. So the screen you're seeing right now is um, called the access controls. This is something Julia will mention at the end, but it's a tool to lock down content. Um, so students can't see it when you don't want them to see it. So I just lock these lessons. So I, you know, so you guys weren't necessarily going through things ahead of me. Um, so I am now unlocking it. So if you are in the code HS section, you can refresh your page. Um, and you'll now see the assignments uh, that I'm going to show you right now. Um, those are all going to be available for you to click through uh, if you want to on your own. Um, so you'll have to refresh um, your page. And to get there, you would click My Sections. Um, and then you'll have a 2021 Summer Unity Workshop section uh, if you enrolled in our uh, workshop section. So that's if you want to follow along. I'm going to work through everything. Uh, right here with you guys. So I'm going to click the downloading the tutorials uh, activity and we'll get to this page. Um, so what this page is doing, it's pointing towards uh, ultimately a Google Drive that has the project that we've created for this activity. So it instructs students to download it um, and then rename it to include their name. So car tutorial with their name, Carol. Uh, or whatever their name is. And then uh, we're going to add it to Unity via the Unity Hub. Um, and then the last step here, we'll open the project and we're going to share it using the Collaborate feature, which I'll talk about. So by clicking this link, this is going to open the Google Drive. And so we get this car tutorial zip, which is the project uh, zipped up. And so I'm going to download it. I've already done this uh, ahead of time. And so Let's uh, let me switch over here to my finder. Okay, um, so I uh, when I downloaded it, and this is obviously on a Mac, um, it appeared in my downloads, which then I moved into my Unity files folder. Um, part of the install process, and this we go through the lesson, is choosing where, what directory, directory on your drive are you going to be saving your projects? So these are all project folders that I have. Um, so here's the car tutorial that I just downloaded prior to this workshop. I unzipped it and it produced this folder and I renamed it to include my name. Um, and that's going to be important when, uh, when sharing with uh, teachers, with you guys through the, um, 
the collaborate feature. Um, and so you can specify too, if you want students to put something else, they could put their last name, a uh, student code or, or something. Um, that'll be the identifier for their projects. So to add this to Unity, so this is the Unity Hub. Um, so it shows um, the install. So right now I have that version that I discussed installed, 2020-312. Um, and then here's a list of my projects. So right now that project is not in here. Um, so I'm gonna click add, and then I'm just gonna select the folder for that project. So in this case, it was the car tutorial. And I'm gonna open it. And so you'll see here, here's the car tutorial. It has, it matches the version I'm using. Um, if you have multiple versions on your computer, which I don't recommend, uh, you'd be able to click that and choose which version uh, you wanna try to open the project in. It'll start by default with um, what you have. And you can see here uh, what the project was made in. Um, so that version. So I'm going to click on this and we'll get this open. And while this is opening, I'll just show you on the CodeHS side. Um, so we've, we've done this uh, download uh, activity. Uh, I just clicked add and I'm opening it right now. Um, I'll get to the collaborate in a moment. Uh, but the next activity in the CodeHS, uh, I don't know if you can see it, my zoom's in the way, but the next activity in this lesson here uh, will be our uh, exercise. And so this is the exercise placeholder for the activity that's going to occur in Unity. So every Unity activity has a placeholder in CodeHS. And that's going to be important to help track progress and grades uh, through the CodeHS system. Um, a lot of them are going to have similar language and identifying uh, the name of the project and then some questions uh, related to the, the tutorial project itself. Um, it also reminds students to make sure that they uh, are publishing changes uh, through the Collaborate section of Unity, um, which we'll talk about. So this is the activity placeholder for the tutorial that I'm gonna show you right now. Uh, and so here's the project file in Unity that just opened. This was the car tutorial that they downloaded um, from our site. And so if you haven't used Unity, uh, again, there's a lot that's going on here. Uh, we have lessons prior to this that show all the, the different windows, the views, how to navigate and move around, all the basics. So that's already covered. So again, if you don't totally understand what you're seeing and feel overwhelmed, that's okay. You haven't done the, the, the preceding lessons yet. So I want to demonstrate this for, first tutorial. I'm going to click through it. So Unity has tutorial system built in. So we as CodeHS developers, we've written these tutorials in the Unity platform. So if I click this tutorial one, this relates to that activity in CodeHS and our developing team actually wrote this tutorial um, and it takes students in a step-by-step -step way through this activity. So it's you know telling them what we're gonna do. I can then click start. So it says, all right, first uh, we need to share the project with the teacher. So I didn't do this uh, yet. So we have this collaborate feature. So collaborate is a tool uh, that we're using to be able to share projects uh, from students to teacher to be able to grade and track uh, progress. Um, this is not a feature for students to collaborate on a single project. At least that's not how we're using it. Um, so this is to be able, if I'm a student, I'm gonna now share this with my teacher. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm gonna click set a project ID and that creates a unique identifier um, for this project. Uh, and so part of setting up collaboration, you're gonna set up an organization for your classroom. Again, that's discussed in a previous lesson. Once I do that, now I can click uh, create project ID. So that's a unique identifier for this project. Um, and now I get this collaborate window. And so the other last step is it starts with collaborate being off. I want to turn it on um, so that my project is now shared with the teacher um, and the teacher will be able to see my project in that organization uh, project list. And uh, so you can see kind of all the elements that are in this project uh, that came preloaded. 
that are gonna be shared with the teacher. Um, okay, so that's the first step is just connecting that. And then we click through. All right, so it says adding a prefab scene. In the project browser, um, there's a scene folder and we're going to uh, add the test track. So this is the project window. Uh, there's a lot of folders in here. Again, we talked through these different pieces earlier in the, the course, but we wanna open a scene and specifically, we're going to open the test track. So this tutorial says we want to drag this in. And then we're going to remove this default uh, scene here. So the hierarchy is what's live in our editor in Unity right now. And so it comes with this pre-made scene, which is pretty sweet. It's kind of a mountain landscape. And we have a car on here somewhere, which there it is over there. We can find it over there. So this was the first step in the tutorial. So now we're gonna play the game. Uh, so what you saw before was a scene view. Uh, now this is instructing that we wanna press play um, and actually run it. Hopefully it runs smoothly with Zoom. Zoom tends to slow things down, but we'll see how it looks. So this is now the live view of the game. And what's awesome is with this project, it already comes loaded with a controller script. So I'm driving this live right now. Um, so this is a car. The car itself is a prefab. It has a controller component attached to it with key commands that you can see on the right side. Um, so right away, it's fun. It gets students <laughs> driving uh, and kind of having fun with a game um, right in the Unity platform. Um, so this is kind of the first tutorial is, is just getting them exposed here. The important part with game view is any changes I make while we're in game mode aren't going to stick. So I need to press play again to exit out of game mode and then I'll move through the tutorial. All right. So now we're talking through, uh, making some adjustments to this car. So in my hierarchy, so these are all the elements that are in the scene right now. Um, I want to look at uh, my vehicles. So it says in the hierarchy, select the family car. And so this is the inspector window uh, that students really get to know. Uh, and what's awesome about Unity is there are scripts coding that are attached to this, uh, this prefab or this game object um, that, that instruct how the car is gonna interact with the environment, how the controls will move it. And what Unity does is it takes those variables from the coding and puts it into the inspector window. So students don't have to know how to code in order to start adjusting um, some of the variables. Um, so once I select that here, I'm instructed to adjust the max angle and max torque. So in the wheel drive section, I want to adjust the max angle to 20 and the max torque to 600. So that's gonna make it a little bit easier to drive my car. It's not gonna be as sensitive and I'm really changing the variables in this grid. This is one area where you could um, extend this for advanced students, students who have some programming. You can actually edit this script in the code editor. Uh, and so they could start getting familiar with the scripting that's going on behind the scenes that a more advanced student would actually write themselves. But for now, we can just put them in here um, and that's fine. Now we're instructed to play again and see how this adjusts the game. So you probably won't notice it from your point of view, um, but while driving it, I would definitely notice, you know, my turning isn't as sensitive, you know, so it affects how, you know, I'm a terrible driver. <laughs> it affects how I am moving through this world and my max, uh, my max torque. So acceleration in there. Um, and press play to stop it, exit the game view, and we'll move forward. So that's the first tutorial. It's very simple. Um, again, they, it's building on what their prior knowledge, um, but it's really leveraging a project that has a sample scene that they can get in and right away play with and starting adjust, adjusting the properties in this uh, script component uh, so that they can actually edit the game. And, and this is where you as a teacher have some room to extend this and say, hey, take the, less, the rest of the class and try changing things and see what you discover. Um, so there's a lot you can do. And here's the other script we didn't even look at, um, working with the suspension of the car. Um, so there's a lot you can kind of explore as well 
uh, without, again, having the technical knowledge of like how that script is, uh, is being developed. So the final step here with the Collaborate is, so we, we've shared the project with teachers. Um, the students have through this Collaborate tab. And so now the students are instructed to, um, right here it says, when finished, publish the changes and write tutorial one completed in the summary field. So uh, what students would wanna do is select all. So it's selecting all the files in here. And so we're gonna publish those. And I would write, uh, what I say, tutorial uh, one completed. And so you as a teacher are going to see that in your organization list of projects through the collaborate uh, function. And then the students would click publish. So you as a teacher will now see the uh, kind of timestamp around the most recent published thing. Um, and you have the ability to kind of go through the different timeline of publishes. So if you say, hey, this tutorial is due on Friday, um, you can open up the most recent publish, you know, prior to Friday or Friday and before. Um, and so this is a way that by default, we're, we're sharing this course is using the Collaborate. We'll talk about other ways to do this. Um, but through the teacher portal in Unity, you'll be able to see all the projects shared with you and then the, uh, the published versions of those projects. And so you can open then those projects on your own computer and see what the students did. For something like this, that's simple. Maybe you don't want to open it because they're really just, it's more exploratory, uh, but we'll see in a future tutorial uh, an exercise where you'd really want to get into Unity. Um, so that's that's the tutorial one. Um, this scene has been modified, so I'm going to save this scene before finishing. And uh, just as a reminder, so that corresponds to this placeholder in CodeHS. So then I would type here as a student, our tutorial, Ryan, that was the name of my project, and then answer these questions uh, and click submit and continue to move on to the next tutorial uh, in the CodeHS. Um, so this is a way to track it as a teacher in the CodeHS uh, management system. So um, I just wanna show you uh, kind of what the other tutorials will be working through. I'm not gonna click through each one, uh, but just to give you a sense. So um, the second tutorial is now, it's not taking this uh, pre-built, this kind of prefab environment um, from the project. It's gonna be opening up a different scene. So this is a uh, test track. So I'm gonna open sample scene now. So this is a blank scene. So in the second tutorial, students will be starting with a blank scene and then they're gonna be adding uh, their own elements. So in this case, they're going to add the track. So now here's the track that they're adding themselves. And then they would be adding their own vehicles here and we're going to use uh, the prefab vehicle. We can choose whatever type of car, sports car. And so they have to now work through um, manipulating uh, these elements. And again, they've learned these basics of how to move the car and transform uh, different things. So I'm just going to, you know, reset this to zero, zero. Uh, and so students can start manipulating themselves. And so the tutorial walks them through. So they're now kind of creating their own test track and, and have to set it up themselves. Um, which is great. They, they, it was given to them at first and then now they get the chance to make it. And so they'll have a chance to add uh, different objects um, to the environment. We have, you know, rocks and ramps, um, speed bumps to be able to make the track a little more interesting. Um, and then they also learn in this tutorial how to um, get this car to interact uh, with the track and the camera uh, that's going to follow it. So right now, if I were to press play, nothing's really going to happen because we don't have the camera. Well, the car's not on the track, so it's going to fall, but also we don't have the camera attached to uh, the track itself or the, the car itself. Um, so that would be tutorial three. Um, tutor sorry, tutorial two. <laughs> tutorial three is then getting some uh, 
practicing adding some new elements and they actually get into the asset store. Um, I'll just save this. So if you're new to, to Unity, uh, Unity has a great community of shared assets. A lot of developers will share uh, everything from you know, environments to controllers to uh, game objects. Um, so this walks students through downloading a free new car asset uh, from this asset store, importing it into their um, asset library here, this project window, and then being able to actually add this to their scene. Um, so uh, it kind of it, it introduces students to this like super powerful community and a lot of it's free. Um, and so students can now kind of play with a new car and this walks them through uh, adding that. And again, how to uh, get the car to interact with the track, um, have the camera to follow it. So there's a lot here and this, this really walks them through it. Um, so those are the three tutorials, uh, taking them step-by-step, step, slowly increasing the complexity. Um, and uh, again, after each tutorial, they'll use Collaborate. They'll say, you know, tutorial two completed and then click publish. And that'll push the most recent project to the teacher. Um, so the teacher can see with that comment of like, all right, this is, you know, they finished tutorial two and they can publish that. Um, so that's how the tutorials work in uh, in Unity, and we use these in this Unity Fundamentals module, um, and then use the Code HS activities, the free response activities, to track was it submitted, and then here's some reflection questions to think about. Um, and then the final activity in this lesson uh, is to make it their own. Uh, so students are going to take another blank scene and totally create their own track and world. And there's a lot they can do with transforming the track, adding objects, transforming the objects. Uh, and there are some requirements here that we outline in terms of using a, a new car prefab. Um, there should be a clear path you know, for the car to follow and you can be creative if you want to take it off the track. Um, and then there needs to be at least uh, five other game objects uh, that are scaled uh, within the world. So we provide some of that uh, extensions. The students have to do something they haven't quite done in those tutorials. Um, and this is where, again, you could spend a class period doing this, or you could spend three, uh, depending on how into it your students are and engage and, and push them to come up with something new with the assets that we've given them. Um, and that's a lot of game development is taking what's been done and how can you put a, a new twist on it? Um, everything doesn't have to be totally new from the start. So that was a lot, uh, but hopefully that gave you a sense of, of this first lesson. And it, again, it's in the middle of uh, Unity Fundamentals module. Um, and uh, we've, we've used the tutorials in this lesson uh, as a way to step through uh, very specific tasks in Unity versus having to switch between windows. And then there is a chance for students to really make it their own. Um, so um, I would then close class. Um, again, the questions that we kind of asked before is like, all right, now that we've done this, uh, what is a game object? What is a prefab? How are they different? Why are prefabs useful? And these tutorials will help get into that of like, um, of why using a prefab track could be super helpful because you don't have to, build everything from scratch. You have the whole environment attached to it. Um, so there's a lot of room for discussion and exploration why, when you might use one or the other. Um, and actually our next, next lesson, sample lesson, we'll uh, get into some of that too. Um, so just to wrap up here uh, with my part and then we'll break you guys into uh, a breakout. Um, so there are different ways to implement this lesson. So in this case, I had us all watch the video together and then have a little discussion afterwards. Uh, but alternatively, we have the slides available on CodeHS. You could teach through the slides yourself. You could add them to your own presentation or have students watch the video in class on their own or as homework. And then they can come into class ready to work um, and not you don't have to spend time class uh, watching the videos. Uh, the example, I paused the video uh, so that we could do the live example together. I wanted to show you how to download uh, and how to do um, a set of collaboration um, 
so that I could answer student questions as, as we were doing it. But of course, uh, you could watch the video together and do it. You could have students do it uh, on their own and have a worksheet kind of asking questions about the example that they've seen. Um, or you could break them into partners and they're working through it together. Um, the exercises for this, I would have students work individually uh, because this is the first tutorial. I want them to be clicking through all of this uh, to get a sense of things. And then I had discussion questions uh, on both ends, bookending our, our code chess activities, um, just to get some of that discussion going. I'm a big fan of recall, being able to recall ideas from previous lessons. Uh, so that's often how I would approach um, those sort of discussion questions. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the last piece, um, so I mentioned collaborate, collaborate is a great, uh, tool through unity that they provide in terms of managing student submitted projects. Um, so we use that and then we use the code HS platform and exercises to actually record grades and track progress. So you can, you know, within this exercise as a teacher, you can assign it a grade. Um, and so that's just a place that's now linked. Everything's in the Code HS platform. It's all in one place. So definitely recommend using those placeholders to then pro track progress and grades. But if you have um, another LMS or if you use Google Drive, uh, you can manage submitted projects differently. You can have students upload to a different place. I have a lot of teachers, especially if you're in class, um, that would prefer just grading in person. You know, if uh, Cassandra is done and she waves her hand, then you could go over and uh, she could click through and kind of explain what she did. And so that's a, a way to demonstrate, you know, their progress and, and process and you can kind of have a dialogue with them. Um, and then again, you could still use Code HS to track uh, the grades that you want to submit there. Um, you could also have students record videos, uh, screencasts of their submission. So have a walkthrough of what they did and, and maybe the custom customization of what they did um, and then have them share those videos with you. Um, you know, Loom offers like uh, free video recording, something like that. So there's a, a variety of ways to manage that process and that'll be unique, I think, for each of your classrooms. Um, so to end here and we'll do a break right after this. Um, so uh, we're going to split you guys up into breakout groups uh, and it'll be five or six of you. Uh, and so we're going to post this link into the chat. Uh, inside this link is a series of uh, files. Choose the file that relates to your breakout group number. So if you're in breakout group four, open group four discussion questions. Um, I also have a PDF of the lesson plan. Um, for this uh, lesson. So this is something that will be part of Code HS. If you're a pro user, you have access to these lesson plans. So uh, we'll give you some time now to uh, click through, look through this lesson plan, have some discussion amongst you guys, um, and then go ahead and, and take that break. And we'll post in the chat uh, when we would like to return uh, as a group and, and look at the next two lessons, which will be a quicker overview of the next two. Um, so this will be a good time now to, to chat amongst peers. So with that. All right, so I have our, I have our breakout rooms ready to go. Um, Ursula, if you could drop that folder link into the chat so that everyone has access to those documents, you're gonna know your breakout room number once you um, join your room, you will get a pop-up that will um, tell you um, that your room is ready and you'll just have to accept that. Um, and so we are going to build our break into this time so that we can maximize the amount of time here to go through those other two really awesome and different lessons that we have for you as well. So um, we are gonna come back, we're gonna have 10 minutes. So um, take some time to discuss what you saw, discuss how you could use it in your classroom. And if you want to, go grab some water or use the restroom. You can do that as well. And we'll come back at 10 after the hour. And let me just make sure that, yes. And you will definitely be getting the recording in um, by, by the end of the day, you'll re receive that recording. And let me just make sure that we get this link to you. Breakout room. All right. 
So there is the document um, folder that you will use with your breakout rooms. And I'm gonna open our rooms now. Reminder, we're gonna come back in 10 minutes. So um, make sure you chat with your group and then um, take a little break if you need. And we'll come back at 10 after the hour. Here we go. So you'll just have to accept that pop-up to join your breakout room.
Hello, I just realized I'm on mute. Um, Brian, I'm trying to get in. I was, I received the message to go to group five. However, um, it's not connecting. Right. Thank you, uh, Michelle. I'll, tr I'll try to join again. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Okay, yeah. Do you see where you can do that? In yes, the I do. And I'll, I'll try again. Thank you. Okay. Welcome.
All right, welcome back as you're joining the main room again. We'll just wait a little bit, let everyone rejoin. Welcome back if you're joining in. We'll just give another 10 seconds here, let people rejoin the main group. I think we're all set to go, Ryan. Okay. Lesson two. Right. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Uh, hopefully that was uh, helpful and uh, you guys could share some thoughts with each other. Uh, there are a lot of great questions on the parking lot uh, doc as well. Um, so be sure to check that out, um, things around uh, installs and using CodeHS and teaching one semester class. Um, so uh, yeah, be sure to check that out even if you don't have questions just to read through what others were asking. Um, so, um, so I'm gonna go through um, just like very top level, uh, two more sample lessons to give you a good demonstration of uh, a couple of different types of lessons um, than the tutorial lesson that you just saw. Um, this sample lesson uh, comes at the end of uh, that module we were just in, so Unity Fundamentals. Um, so students have, have worked with the card tutorial. They've also learned about um, using character controllers, using animation paths. Um, so there's some in between kind of where you just were. Um, this lesson is a little bit different um, because it's not based on the tutorial. So it's going to be a little bit more open-ended uh, creation for the students. Um, so uh, again, there's going to be a, a project uh, that they're going to have to download. So I'll, I'll show you that. Um, but it starts off with uh, getting into scene design uh, using prefabs. Uh, and so these, uh, this video talks through just a handful of tips of how to approach scene design, because it can be very simple. Uh, it can also be very complex. And so how I might do this with as a teacher is I might uh, share the slides with students and then break them into groups and have them work through each slide and each tip on the slide uh, and discuss why they think that tip has been included and why it's important. Um, so there's a worksheet here that we'll share in the chat um, and it just uh, helps outline, uh, kind of do exactly what I mentioned, uh, you know, have them list the tip and then the importance uh, of that tip and why it would be included. Um, so I'll just show you uh, quickly here what those slides would entail, um, just so you get a sense. So tip one, starting with a general layout of a scene. Uh, tip two, designing quickly, uh, getting early and frequent feedback. Tip three, focusing on one perspective, one camera angle to start instead of trying to tackle the whole world. Tip four, using real life and other games as inspiration. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. Uh, so that's, that's an important one. Uh, and tip five, the best way is just to get in there and do it um, and iterate. Uh, and so you don't wanna spend too long planning, uh, but really getting students in there and doing it. So those would be the tips. Uh, and then you can see in the worksheet that we just put in the chat, um, how I would have groups uh, think about this and then I would bring the class together and then uh, choose a group to explain their thoughts on each tip and then have a discussion around that. So this is a chance just to talk about kind of big picture, how do we wanna approach uh, our landscape design? Um, so this is uh, similar to that last lesson in that there is a project. Um, and so I'm a fan of, of live demos in class. Uh, so I would uh, walk them through uh, again, downloading the project and, and doing the example together in class. And so um, I'll just show that to you really quickly, uh, what that would look like. So I already clicked the link, I downloaded it, uh, added it to the uh, folder. So now I just need to add it to Unity Hub, similar to what we did before. So this was the scene building project. I renamed it, I added my name to it. Um, so identical to what we did in the last project. Um, so I'm not gonna walk through all that again. Um, now it appears in my Unity Hub, uh, and then I can open it. 
and I will try to make the window bigger. I think somebody commented the Unity was a little small. So let's see if I can make that a little bigger here. So the focus of this lesson um, uh, in the example is uh, demonstrating another reason why you would want to use uh, prefabs over just game objects itself. So let's see if I can make this bigger. Hopefully that helps. So in the project file, this is how it starts, a, a blank scene here uh, with a getting started exercise. Uh, and there's a corresponding uh, code HS um, exercise responding to this uh, or corresponding to this, the getting started. And so what I would demo in class, um, they have in the project window, they have a lot of prefabs. So this, uh, this lesson is all about using prefabs and, and generating a scene, a full scene. So we included a lot here. This comes from a free uh, package on the asset store. And so let's just take uh, a quick example here. I'm gonna grab a rock uh, and let's uh, we'll grab let's say rock nine here. And I'm gonna drag this in and I'm just gonna create a ground out of this. Uh, we'll go 10 by, 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 by 10. And zoom out. So I just created, created just a very quick ground. And what I'm going to do is now let's grab, um, let's grab a, uh, ooh, let's grab a, a stump. All right, I'm going to grab a tree stump here, tree stump here, and drag it into the uh, the world. Um, and again, you know, students will get very good at manipulating where these things are. And we'll just actually uh, set this to zero, zero. So it's here and then we'll raise it up. You can always double click and that'll bring it into view. Oh, my, this guy's probably, let's bring this down as well. Oops, it's the fun of live demos. Okay, cool. All right, so there's our stump. Now we can see it's sitting on the ground. Um, so I'm gonna add multiple versions of these stumps. Again, this is the demo I'm showing students. So we're gonna add multiple versions from the prefab uh, onto our scene. So the benefit of using a prefab is that I have multiple stumps and let's say I want this stump all to be a certain height. I actually, this is too low for my scene. So I could click individually and transform all of them or if I click on the original prefab and you see it on the top here as this, this is now the prefab asset in the inspector window, um, I can change the properties of the prefab itself, which is then gonna uh, affect all of the um, versions of this prefab that are in the scene. And I can see all of them here. Um, so stump one, two, and three. So if I, let's say I want this taller. So if I click two and press enter, that's going to make all my stumps taller, which is huge. Because if you have a landscape, you're building a forest and you have all of one tree and you want to make this type of tree taller, you don't want to have to click through and scale everything. So you can adjust the properties of a prefab all in one place. Now, of course, I could still adjust the properties of a single object. And so I could click on that single object, this third stump that I added, and I could make this one even bigger. And it's not going to affect the others because I'm changing a single stump, the property, the transform property of a single stump. And likewise, I could uh, rotate this a little bit. Um, let's put in 80. And so that rotates that single stump, not the others. But if I wanted to change all of them, I would work through the, the prefab. Um, so that's what this lesson's uh, kind of one. Uh, new concept to extend their knowledge of prefabs uh, before they start developing their larger scene. Um, and so uh, I would demonstrate that in class and then ask some discussion questions around that. Um, before they jump into the scene development, so in the Code HS lesson, so we have the downloading, I just did the demo, so kind of showed all of that. Um, then we have this uh, we have the getting started activity is what they just did. I just did with you guys kind of changing the properties of prefabs versus individual objects. But this, um, this activity plan your scene here, let me show you that because it's a little different. 
Um, so before they get into the unity, you know, details of plan of developing their scene, uh, as tip number one in the video and the slide said, start general, let's think big picture and let's make a map of it. So this activity has them uh, brainstorm ideas and kind of create a general layout of their scene uh, before getting into unity. And so there are a couple ways that we've outlined they can do this. Um, an easy way is to use pencil paper. So do an offline kind of sketch. So they can do a bird's eye view of their scene. They can draw different perspectives. They can write something. So they can do something offline and then take a picture of it, upload it to their computer, either send it through to an email uh, or, or however you want to send it to their computer. Um, and then in the CodeHS activity, they can actually upload their image right here and that will create a URL. Uh, so they've uploaded their file to our servers and that URL they could then paste into, uh, into the exercise. So they could share their image of like their bird's eye view. That's one way to record it. You could also just have them show you, you know, their hand drawn stuff. Um, of course, they could also just describe their words and scene in the editor. And so be as descriptive as possible. Again, getting a general sense of the scene um, before they get into the details. Because uh, the last thing you'd really want is to say, hey, this is going to be a mountainous scene after you've already added 50 trees. And then you have to adjust everything because you, know, you didn't kind of think through that big concept first. So that's the first activity there um, in the plan your scene. And then they're going to be getting into the uh, building up their scene. Um, uh, in Unity. And I just want to kind of demo, show you what I did uh, for this activity. And so there I create, so they'll be asked to create a new scene, um, which I did, and I labeled my scene Arch. And so I'll just show you it. Uh, I'll save this. All right, so this is the scene that I built. Uh, and this is using just the assets that are already in the package uh, that we give them. So there's a lot here in terms of shape. It's all natural objects. So we do mention that in the description. So they probably won't be designing a cityscape for this. Um, but this is just using those objects and transforming them. I adjust some prefab properties um, so that like all the bushes were the same size and then adjust individual properties. Um, so we had different size rocks. Um, and as tip, uh, uh, three or four, I can't remember, um, focus on one perspective. And so if I play this, there's not, I don't have any action here, but this will show you the, the one game perspective that I have is this. So I'm really, this was the scene that I was trying to craft as like, you know, maybe an entry into uh, something they're gonna explore. So kind of an opening scene. Um, so this is where you can really have fun with students. Like I love this part of these sort of courses. It's just creative. So again, you could give them like an hour or you could give them a full week of like really getting into this. Um, and as I think step two said in the slides, uh, iterate often and get feedback often. And so it might be, they just have a quick, you know, throw in the arch, throw in some rocks, and then you build in time where students may rotate around computers uh, or trade with a partner so that they can move around the scene and kind of look at it and provide feedback and say, ooh, I really like how you have different heights here or like, what, what about adding something here? Or, you know, so they can have concrete feedback to then return and keep developing. Um, you don't want, I think that uh, the general idea in, in something like this is you don't want to put, put too much time into developing uh, and then when you get feedback, they're so hesitant to change because they've already poured in hours on one kind of thing, whether it's a scene or a you know, character or development. So by getting quick and early feedback, and, and this is where you can build that into your classroom, um, students are less, there's less resistance to change because they haven't put as much thought and time into it and, and they can incorporate that a little easier. Um, so I love this lesson. I think it's, it's the last lesson in this module where they can be very creative. As an extension, they could add some of the uh, motion objects from the previous tutorials. So they could add a car and have it drive around their scene or they could have a player 
uh, and use a controller so the player, the like, human player can walk around. Um, so there are extensions too to add to it. Um, that'll really be in our next module where they can make it a little more active, interactive as well. Um, so that's, uh, that's this lesson. Uh, I, again, I always like to end with reflections. Uh, so we have a, a spot in the, the lesson for them to reflect and think about how did they incorporate those tips uh, into their scene. Um, so that's how I would end the, the lesson with those, those questions. So thinking through our little grid here, um, I used the Codage slides. I broke them into groups uh, so they could think through it with a worksheet. Um, and then we brought, we came together to discuss as a class. Um, so in this lesson, there was some individual work and small group work, small groups around the slides and the uh, providing feedback, but then individual development of the actual scene. Um, and then for the example, I, I like to demo that um, just to field questions as we go through it and to be Socratic and kind of that delivery and then ending with that um, kind of reflection questions uh, at the end of the, the lesson. Um, this one will definitely be longer than one class period, um, but that's the fun of it is being able to extend where kids are into it and, uh, and go with it. So that was a quick overview. Um, this one will be even quicker. Um, this comes, uh, this is the first lesson then in the next module. So this is the module four is the first module where they're gonna really develop their own game from scratch. Uh, so there's no specific guidelines of you know, what they have to make. Um, and so this is a lesson where it's not unity based. So this is a little more game design exploration. Um, so we want to develop this foundation in game design, not just how do you use Unity. You know, anyone can learn how to use Unity, but we want to think about, you know, put the horse before the cart. Uh, think about how do we want to structure a game uh, and what makes a good game uh, before we start designing our own. Um, so the the video gets into uh, some common uh, commonly accepted ideas of what makes a good game. You can have I mean, there's so many opinions on what makes a good game. Uh, so there's a lot of room for discussion and exploration in this sort of lesson. Um, but we chose a, a few of the commonly accepted. So for example, all good games are gonna have a challenge or a goal to give us a, a player a sense of purpose that they have something to achieve or that all games are gonna have a chance uh, for players to make meaningful choices that can impact their outcomes. Um, a, fam a famous game developer said, a game is a series of interesting decisions, um, which I love thinking about games that way. You know, so here is a, a snapshot of, a, if you ever played um, uh, Smash Brothers on the Nintendo system, you know, these Nintendo characters. And so if you're this player one, you have choice to make. You can go for the item, you can, you know, try to attack the player or you can jump to get to a, a better location. And so, you know, by providing those choices, it, it adds that intrigue to the game and that these choices make uh, a meaningful impact to the experience uh, of the player. So anyway, so there's a discussion around that. Um, and then students will, uh, for this lesson, the bulk of it is uh, taking two games of their choice and seeing how those elements, the elements of challenge, of player choice, um, uh, and the others presented in the slides, how they apply to the, their games of choice. So it, it could be a video game that they've played and one of their favorites, or it could be something like rock, paper, scissors. You know, what is the challenge in rock, paper, scissors? Why is it a game? What is this, the choice that uh, a player has to make? Or what, what are the rules that form the game uh, and, and make it different than just playing versus, you know, playing a game? Um, so I think there's some neat chance to explore here and, I, and bring some student uh, uh, class engagement so students can present on their games and what they discovered, how these elements are applied throughout the games they really like. Uh, and the final activity is just a, a, a different perspective. It's two popular authors who defined a framework of what makes a game and it breaks it down by percentage. So after this first work, students can now reflect on this new framework and whether they agree or not. Um, 
so all of this work comes before them actually thinking through their own first game. Um, and their own first game will be simple. They don't have all the, the deep technical skills you know, that developers will have. So it'll, it will be a simple game, but I think having these in mind uh, are, are important and having a discussion around this before getting into that design part is really important. So, um, so yeah, so that gives you a sense of the three. Um, we're not gonna do this, this final breakout group. You're welcome. We'll post the link in here. Um, you're welcome to look at the questions uh, for your own reflection, um, looking at the three different types of lessons. We have the one lesson that had the Unity tutorials, one lesson that worked in Unity but was open-ended. That was the scene design. Uh, so there was less um, direct instruction. There were some requirements, but not a click-through tutorial. Uh, and then this third lesson where it wasn't in Unity, um, it was more conceptual uh, discussion based, uh, providing some uh, context for their, their own game development. So again, we'll put this link in the chat so you guys can access it. Um, but we're gonna, uh, we wanna make sure there's time just to look at some of the code HS tools and, and we have time to answer questions that come up in the parking lot. Um, so, uh, awesome. So there's the, the discussion link. Uh, so feel free to again to open that and, and look through those questions yourself and, and reflect on them if you'd like. And I will, uh, I'm going to pass this back to Julia. I'm going to go into, well, I'll do it right now, actually. I'm just going to unlock all three lessons. So you can now start clicking through uh, these lessons and, and read through the activities. Um, that I just showed you. Um, so you'll have to refresh your section page uh, to see the assignments unlocked, but it's all available to you. And these are the actual lessons that will appear in the modules we'll release um, at the end of the summer. So with that, I will pass it over to Julia. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ryan. I am going to share my screen now. We had so much to look at there, so much to think about. Really, really great. Let's take a dive into some teacher tools that you can use on CodeHS as you are going through this course. Let me just get myself all set up here. All right. And I will have my chat open, but it's definitely a lot easier to get your questions answered in, in our um, question parking lot talk. That is the, the best spot for you as we go through these tools. So I do see a lot of familiar names in our workshop. So I'm, it's so nice seeing you again here um, to learn about our, our new courses. Um, a lot of these tools are going to be um, similar to the ones that, that we've seen before in other workshops. So just giving you a heads up, but we only have about 20 minutes. So I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly. Um, a reminder though, you will receive these slides. And so all of the slide, the slide document will show some information about all the tools um, that I'll go through and probably even some additional ones because I don't think we'll have enough time to go through everything. So I will try to focus on the ones that make the most sense for this course today. So we are going to hop over into CodeHS so I can demo some of these tools for you and give you some information about how you can use the tools on CodeHS along with this course to um, have a successful year with your students. And honestly, I'm like, I'm excited. I wish I could teach this next year for my kids. <laughs> um, I don't think you'll have any trouble getting them engaged or getting them excited. Um, so this is a really, really awesome course that we're really excited to release this year, this summer. All right. So on our main page, you're going to see uh, um, your all your sections, any of the sections that you're in as a student or that you teach as a teacher. Um, so for this part of our workshop, you can just sit back and watch. You don't need to click along with me. If you are um, curious about a certain tool and you wanna try to find it or access it on your account, you are more than welcome to do that as well. Um, but mine will look a little bit differently because I have some um, pre-pre um, 
implemented uh, student data in there already. So um, from my section here, um, and a reminder, you if you're teaching this game design course for multiple um, multiple periods during the day, multiple class periods, you can create multiple sections. So you can have as many sections as you want of the same course. So the course is the actual content. So for this, it would be that game design in Unity, um, all of those units and all of that material. And you can create multiple sections of that same content. So we are going to click into our demo section and I'm gonna just easily hop right over to my preloaded tabs. Um, and here are my students along with some information about them. So if you are new to Code HS, um, this is gonna be a whirlwind. Definitely, if you want more information about anything, check out, um, put it in that parking lot doc and we can get you some, some really helpful um, articles and, and links there. So on our main page, three really helpful things that I'm just gonna point out quickly are announcements, conversations, and attendance. So announcements, if we click this button here, you'll see a nice page where you can announce something to your entire um, class section. So you can choose which section you want to talk to, and this will pop up for students as soon as they log into CodeHS. So this is a really nice way for you to make sure you give students the information that they need. I know for me, it's always the bell rings, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot to tell them this. I can, you know, you can use announcements right here to just make sure that they have that information. The second tool is this conversation. So if you click conversation with a specific student, you are able to chat with that student individually. Um, this will only go to that student. And um, this is a nice way for you to just check in with a student, regardless of um, if it doesn't have to be linked to a certain exercise in the course, because we have other ways for you to have conversations with students um, on certain activities so that you can give them feedback or things like that. Um, but if you just want to check in with them in general, this is a great way to do that. All right. Attendance is that last feature on this main page that I want to show you. And if we click on this attendance button, you'll see all your students. You'll see the time that they first logged into CodeHS, when they most recently were in CodeHS, and how long they've totally spent on this site. You can also click into weekly attendance to see once it, if it loads um, our week and um, when our students logged in per day. So it's the summer, no one's logging in, everyone's at the beach. But during the school year, you can see, you know, on Tuesday, um, who was there and then you can you know check back oh the student was absent maybe i need to go back and send them a message um, to check in with them and make sure they aren't going to fall behind all right so i do i think people are asking about some of these features so i do believe and um you can correct me if i'm wrong we can double check this but i do believe that the announcements and the conversation features are included in your free plan I do think attendance is included with pro. So I'm gonna just show a lot of um, different options here. Um, and there are a lot of ways, if there's one feature that you're really interested in, but you are a teacher who does, isn't able to teach with pro. When I was teaching with CodeHS in the classroom, um, I was on the free version and I you know, made it work. There are a lot of workarounds on the site so that if you are a student who, I mean, a teacher who isn't able to um, get that that pro version, there are some of these features that have have workaround options there. So definitely, you can ask about that um, in the, the parking lot or in the chat. I'm trying to keep my eye on that as well. All right, something that um, Ryan used in his demo that I really um, like, which is a pro feature, um, is this course settings access controls. So he was using just access controls. There's also, I'm gonna hop into this um, section here on course settings at the top, due date and access control. So this is a lot, gives you a lot of um, control over how students are accessing material. So if you open that up, you'll see the whole course. And this is my demo section is our JavaScript course. So this isn't the game design content, but you would see your course, your section, and you can, um, expand into the module, each module to see the lessons, 
or even further to see each individual activity. So what Ryan did during his demo was make this module locked so that you weren't able to access the material that was in this module until he wanted you to. Then he could go in and say, okay, I just went over lesson one. I am gonna make lesson one now available to my students. The rest of the lessons are going to be locked. So this is um, a way for you to control what students are working on. Maybe you have some students who really work ahead of the, the class and that might be fine in certain scenarios, but there might be one class period where you are really giving important information. You don't want them to miss it. You could lock everything so that they can't get distracted by you know, creating more of their world. They can um, keep, keep, uh, keep with the rest of the class and focus on what you want them to take a look at. The other way that you can do this is by scheduling um, a certain lesson or module or activity to unlock at a time, a certain time. So you can schedule this lesson and include a start time and an end time, which would um, allow students to access that material between certain dates. And what this means, students will still see the content in the course the same way that you would still see those um, lessons in your demo course, but you just couldn't click into them. Now, there is, what if you are just like, well, I don't, you know, one teacher was talking about um, teaching only this course for only a semester, right? So what if you say, we're not gonna get to these, these um, units at the end, these modules, I don't want the students to know that there's these modules after, right? I don't want them to get upset that we only are gonna cover half the course. So instead of changing access controls, you could change the assign setting. So you can say, I don't want this to show up in any student's course at all. And so this is a good way for you to make sure students don't even know that this existed. If you unassign something and you can do this at the module level, at the lesson level or the activity level, same as you um, could do with access controls. And, and then students don't even know what they're missing. So this is a really good way for you to configure your course the way that you want it. And past this, Another really awesome thing that you can do that I love because I am very hardcore into differentiation, especially next year, we are gonna have students at all different settings, all different levels um, because of the crazy year we just had. So you are able to hop in and change these settings for a specific student. So if I wanted to go in and change the settings for just Noah, I can open the settings for him and I can assign um, or unassign certain um, modules or lessons or activities or change due dates. So maybe Noah was absent and I wanna give him, just him a few more days to work on something. I can then make it available for him while it's locked for the rest of the class. So this is a really great option for you to differentiate based on what your students specifically need. All right. The next thing that I do, sorry, my dog is excited. Um, the next thing I do want to look at is the grade book. And you can find this right up here. If we click on grade book, you will see that we have all of our assignments and we have the grades that students have received. And like Ryan was saying in this course, a lot of the um, actual grading that you will do will be off code HS, right? Opening their Unity projects, using that collaborate feature in Unity to grade their material or maybe grading it in class as you're going around, you will still be able to enter those grades in, in here into, um, into the system here so that they're saved somewhere. Um, and so I wanna show you how you can review that. So if I just open um, one of these um, assignments here, I can now see all the students how long they spent on this, which won't really help so much for this, um, this course because they're spending a lot of their time off code HS. Um, but if they submitted it on code HS, what score you gave them, and you can hop right into fast grade from here. And the grade book and fast grade are a pro tool, but if you are on free, you can still um, review and grade your students work. So if you hop over to review, or on the left-hand side, it's gonna be called code review. So those are two different ways to get to this page. You are able to grade your students' work um, here, regardless if you're on pro or free. So grade mode is a free um, 
uh, the free way to grade your students, fast grade is going to be the pro version. But grade mode will still give you that access. So you can go in, and I just want to show you if you have never used Code HS, how you have this grade tab. You're not going to see this whole editor and the um, the world here because we are running that outside of Code HS for this course. But you'll still have that grade tab, and you can give them a grade, provide feedback, have a conversation with them based on this activity that they've completed. So you might even say in here, you know, I checked out your Unity project. You needed three trees, and you only made one, right? So you can still have that conversation here with them, and it's then saved somewhere. That has been my favorite thing of teaching this year. Um, a lot of things are virtual on the computer, so the student can't say, well, you never told me, right? So providing that feedback on Code HS, you have that running conversation with your students to make sure that you know what you told them um, is saved somewhere and you can refer back to it. So that is a, a way that anyone is able to grade on Code HS, and that will be really helpful for you as we don't have auto graders for this um, game design course. All right, um, the last um, resource here that I wanna show you are all these resources for the course, and I will show you how to get to those. So if we are in our um, demo section, we can get resources on the left, or once we click in, we can get resources up here. And um, depending on if you click up here, or if you click on the side, um, you may see this, this resources resources page a little bit differently so you may see it show up this way where you have your syllabus button up here you have your lesson plans all your solution references any information that has been been made available from the code hs team um, some handouts so like ryan had said you know here's a handout that might go with a video that might be included here and you would also have a teacher version as well for that you may see the resources show up in this way. Um, usually when you click on the side, this is how you will see them laid out. So they are the same. You still have that same um, information, but just don't want you to get confused there. So you have your handouts, your problem guides, lesson plans, your syllabus. And the last thing I wanna um, draw your attention to on this resources page is our first week resources. So this is a really good um, thing for you to check out that code hs has developed some different options for how you can start your year off so that you can create your classroom culture of collaboration and so some of these um, activities will have be focused on coding some of them will will not so you can check those out there and we also have what if you want to take a look at another course we have our course catalog um, so game design and unity is one course that we're going to be releasing this summer, but we have even more than that. We have so many, our, our catalog is just growing. So if you click on view course catalog, you'll be brought to this page where you can search in many different ways for all the different content that we have. And again, all of the curriculum on code HS is available for free. So you and your students can go through any of these courses, regardless if you're on free or pro. So you can look at different languages, AP courses, high school, middle school. If you are in a state that has specific CS standards, you can look up. We have a lot of specific state courses to check out. And then those coming soon, those will be, um, game design will be in here. So you won't be able to assign it to your students yet. Um, once it is fully released, it will be added into our full course catalog and you'll be able to create sections and assign that to your students. All right, and the very last thing before we wrap up, if you still have questions as you're going through um, our, our curriculum, as you're you know going through the school year with your students and something comes up and you're like, well, I wish I asked this in the workshop, right? When I had those Code HS people right there to ask. Well, you always have access to Code HS people. So in your toolbox, You'll see a lot of the tools that we went through really quickly today, so you can check those out. But I want us to look at this support section. So this contact us is always available for you to chat with us, ask your questions, get more information. Um, we, if you have feedback, if you have thoughts, you know, this is a brand new course, so we want to know how it's working for you and your students. 
you can definitely write into through this contact us and you'll be um, your question will be pushed to where it needs to so that we can get you an answer or make sure that your thoughts are being heard. If you are like I I want to just like there's got to be an FAQ someone has already asked this question I know it um, head over to this knowledge base. And there are so many different articles on everything you can do on code HS all the new features that we have um, all of the, the questions that are constantly being asked, you can find those in the knowledge base. All right, so that was a lot and i'm sorry if it was a little overwhelming. <laughs> I wanted to get in as much as I could so that you are able to see all these things that we have to offer so that you are able to have the most successful school year yet. Um, if you are interested in any of those tools, make sure you ask for more information on that parking lot and we can get you some links. Um, and here are some other ways that you can get um, get in touch with us or get um, involved in Code HS. So we have a certified educator program that you can apply to if you want more information about that. Definitely ask for a link in the parking lot or you can search for that on our site. We have a pretty active Facebook group at Code HS, so you can check that out to collaborate, continue collaborating with um, other teachers who are in similar scenarios to you, like you were able to start in the breakout rooms today. We have a bunch of other workshops that are going on for free the rest of the summer. We have a bunch more new courses like our game design course that you might want to check out. We also have two workshops that will focus more on those tools. Um, so I know I went through in just 20 quick minutes, but we have two hour workshops, one for new Code HS teachers. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I saw all those tools and I am overwhelmed, I, I don't know where to start. The, the new Code HS teacher workshop would be a great place. Um, if you're like, I've been using Code HS for a while, but I'm sure there's other ways to, that I can do things that would be easier. Um, we have an experienced Code HS teacher workshop as well coming up. So be sure to check those out and we'll drop that link into the chat. And we also have some active social media accounts as well. So you can follow us there for the latest information. It would be really helpful for us if you completed our feedback survey. We want to know what you thought, what went well, what could be better. We are here for you. Um, that is the whole goal of what, why we're doing these free workshops. We want to give you the information that you need in the best way. So um, please fill out that, that workshop and that link is in the chat as well, that, that survey. And the last but not least, um, if you need a completion certificate for being here today, um, you can fill out this quick Google form with just your name and your email. Make sure to double check your email because if your email is wrong, it will just get bounced back and you won't be able to receive that. Um, so just fill out that quick Google form and we will send those certificates out by tomorrow so that you have that documentation um, for whoever you need it for. And all those links have gone in the chat. I know there's a, a lot of them, <laughs> a lot of links at the beginning, a lot of links at the end, but hopefully you were able to see this new awesome course picture yourself and your students being able to use this and and get some good ideas on how to make that happen so thank you so much for being here um does anyone have any last minute questions um that that parking lot will stay active so um you can definitely refer back to that as well that's probably the best way for you to get your info all right thank you everyone have a great summer and hope we hope to see you at a future workshop. Have a great day.